morning. Greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standard of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you. We are here for you on the bright side. Our number 844-236-6010. That's 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, formulations, ingredients, something you may have heard about, read about, something somebody may have told you, something you've seen on the internet, we can help clear up any confusion you have about formulations, ingredients, skincare products, nutritional supplements. Of course, if you or a loved one are dealing with a health challenge you need help with, we are here for you as well. 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010 is our number today and every day on the Bright Side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the Bright Side, please head to my websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or critical healthnews.com. You can purchase longevity products right off the website, or you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com for a one-time $25 fee. You can join the team, be part of the Brightside Ben team, and make some money selling longevity products, helping spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. You can also get your products at the wholesale price. Enjoy all the tax benefits associated with having your own business. It's a perfect business if you're an entrepreneur, if you like the entrepreneur lifestyle, call 866-735-2470 for more information. That's 866-735-2470. You can also sign up right off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Also want to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products. If you're dealing with hyperpigmentation, dark spots, or acne blemishes, if you're looking for a good anti-aging product, you need to be using retinol. Retinol is a form of vitamin C, one of the few active ingredients that will really make any difference on your skin. In fact, there's not, there's probably two or three active ingredients that will make a difference on your skin. Vitamin C, vitamin A. And alpha hydroxy acids, all our Truth Skin Health products are loaded with vitamin C, premium fat soluble, stable vitamin C, up to 70% in some of our Truth Skin Health products. You can check them all out at truthtreatments.com or Truth Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Serum, Truth Omega 6 Healing Cream, Truth Transdermal Sea Balm, never any preservative fragrances, fillers, waxes, surfactant, water, oil, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth skin health products. They're all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to the Bright Side, friends. Got lines open for you at 844-236-6010. That's 844-236-6010, and we'll get your calls at the bottom of the hour, as we always do on the Bright Side. We've been talking about cardiovascular, heart disease, heart failure, strokes, heart attacks, aneurysms, the leading cause of mortality in the United States and around the world. The take-home message after, oh, I don't know, two months or so of talking about cardiovascular disease, the take-home message is maintaining heart health is not a medical issue. I'm going to say that again because that's so darn important. Maintaining the health of the heart arguably the most important structure in the body, the leading cause of death is heart disease, and maintaining heart health is not a medical issue. 
It's not a pharmacy issue. There are no drugs. There are no tools in the, in the magic bag of tricks of your doctor that will make your heart healthy, period. It's a lifestyle issue, like all health challenges. It's a lifestyle issue, and this is why, despite the fact that we have more cardiologists than any other culture, any other country in the history of the world, and more drugs, and more surgeries, and more diagnostics, and more dollars spent on heart disease prevention, we still have what can only be called an epidemic of cardiovascular disease, of heart disease, the leading cause of death. Now, there are many, many ways. Well, th while there's no doctor ways to make the heart healthy, there are many ways that we can do it ourselves. This is so ironic to me. We've got all these cardiologists and all this heart awareness and all this billions of dollars spent on prevention. The American Heart Association, been around for 60 years, presided over this epidemic. How ironic is it that we don't need them? This is all about how we live our lives. So I've compiled 13 different ways to keep our heart healthy without the medical model, without hideous prescription drugs, without diagnostics, without medical procedures, without devices, without implants, without stents, without angioplasties. 13 ways to keep our heart healthy from the comfort of our own living room and kitchen. Number one, change the way we eat. Eating less, calorie restriction. We've got to get the eating thing under control. Now, it's hard because we're bombarded at every turn by signals and messages from uh, corporate interests who could care less about our, the, our health or the health of our families. We're bombarded with messages to eat. Everywhere you turn, we're bombarded with messages to eat. And our, heart, our brain is hardwired to look for food from millions, hundreds of thousands of years of evolution in a world where there wasn't a lot of food. There's only been a surplus of food for a couple hundred years. There's only been the incredible amount of sugar that's available for 100, 150 years. So we're living in a world that our body is not prepared for, which is why our brain has to take over consciously. We have to volitionally understand that food is not our friend past a certain amount. For the most part, food is not our friend. We only need a little bit of food. And I'm not here to beat anybody up for our eating behavior or for their eating behaviors. I've got my own eating issues. But the, fa the, the point I want to make is if you have a cardiovascular health problem, this is where you want to look. This is where your power comes from. To turn to the doctor, to turn to statin drugs, to turn to uh, angioplasties and balloons and stents and devices that are stuck into the heart is just playing with fire. And it's missing our true power point, our true leverage, which is really based in what we're putting into our system, specifically around food. Eating less food, calorie restriction, allows us to conserve precious resources that are better off being spent on healing and health and building tissue and maintaining biochemistry and keeping our heart healthy. Improving digestive health at the intestinal level, patching up a leaky gut is also incredibly important. Just like there's a gut-brain axis that nobody talks about, or at least we're, we haven't really talked about until recently, there's a gut-heart axis. Toxicity at the gut level will ultimately affect the heart. Toxicity at the gut level thickens the blood. Toxicity at the gut level will suppress oxygenation to the heart, as well as other tissues of the body. Patch up a leaky gut. Use probiotics, use your nightly essence, fermented foods, fiber, anything you can do to patch up a leaky gut to improve nutrient absorption at the gut level, to prevent the flow of toxicity into the circulatory system through the intestine is going to help the heart. So you've got two mechanisms here, two reasons why you want to work on intestinal health or work on digestive health. Number one, you'll be conserving precious, well, three reasons. Number one, you'll be conserving resources. You'll be conserving vitamins and minerals for, for improving the health of the cardiovascular system. Number two, you'll be improving absorption. And number three, you'll be preventing the flow of toxicity into the, uh, into the circulatory system through a, a leaky gut patch up the gut, work on intestinal health. And oh, by the way, if you use connective tissue building strategies, you'll not only build connective tissue in your skin, you'll not only build connective tissue inside the body, you'll be building connective tissue at the level of the intestine, you'll be building connective tissue at the level of the heart. Use gelatin, use your glucogel caps. Use glucosamine, use hyaluronic acid. These are all strategies for building, uh, nutritional strategies for building connective tissue. They will support cardiovascular health and they'll support intestinal health as well. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010. Hi. Okay, we are back 
look on the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number. We do have lines open for you, and we will get your calls here in our next segment, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about heart disease, cardiovascular health issues of any kind, kidney disease, which is a component of uh, circulatory system disease, the epidemic of kidney, it's no coincidence that we have an epidemic of kidney disease, and we also have an epidemic of heart disease. They're related. The kidney filters the blood, and you want to think of kidney issues as circulatory health issues primarily. These are not medical problems. These are lifestyle problems. That's the most important message that I can tell you. That's the, that's the take home message here. Dealing with heart disease is about how we live our lives. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you're on hold, hang tight. We'll get to you in our next segment and we do have lines open for you. So how do you deal with heart disease? Number one, change the way you eat. How do you prevent heart disease also? Not just how do you deal with it. If you have it, how do you prevent it? It is reversible, by the way, as everything in the body is reversible. Change the way we eat. Eat less calorie restriction, improve digestive health. Number two, eat less sugar as well as processed foods. Keeping your blood sugar stable is the next point. It's the second point on the triangle of disease. So, of course, after digestive health comes blood sugar health. When it comes to all health challenges, specifically the heart, again, it's no coincidence that heart disease and diabetes go hand in hand. Probably the most important reason why people get cardiovascular disease is because of blood sugar problems. So keeping your blood sugar stable is super duper important. Stay away from sugar or at best, as best as you can, stay away from sugar. Use more protein. Work out to use that protein. You can't just take protein, by the way, uh, if you're diabetic and you're trying to wean yourself off of sugar. You can't just eat more protein because protein gets turned into sugar. You have to use that protein. You have to eat more protein, and then you have to use that protein by working out or by exercising. Of course, fat is not a problem, so eating more fat is also a good idea. Coconut oil, specifically. Butter also. Keeping your blood sugar stable, in addition to, uh, in addition to uh, reducing your sugar intake, keeping your blood sugar stable can be accomplished, or can, you can help keep your blood sugar stable by using chromium, vanadium. In our sweeties, Longevity Sweeties is chromium, vanadium. The amino acids taurine and arginine can help keep your blood sugar stable. Vitamin A and zinc are important, especially for fructose, especially if you have fructose malabsorption problems. Vitamin A and zinc are very important. Alpha lipoic acid, which is a really, really interesting supplement that can help keep your blood sugar stable. Uh, the B vitamin, vitamin B1 thiamine is important. Omega-3 fatty acids. There's a whole slew of nutritional supplements that are important for keeping the blood sugar stable. Oh, don't forget about magnesium as well. Number three, calm down, reduce cortisol levels, reduce stress hormone. When cortisol uh, goes up, circulation suffers and the, work, uh, the, the heart has to work much harder. Keeping your cortisol levels down can be accomplished through deep breathing, slow, rhythmic, deep breathing, hot water, massage, muscle relaxation, meditation. Just read an interesting article I'll tell, tell you about in our next segment about meditation being important for heart health. Anything you can do to relax the body is going to have benefits for the heart. Relaxing the body is like a medicine. Relaxing the body is not some kind of indulgence. I talk to people all the time that tell me, oh, I just can't relax. Oh, I think too much. Uh, that's, not a, you know, that's not a good thing, folks. I just can't relax is not a good thing. If you just can't relax and you're taking a prescription drug, you're missing a major power point. You're missing a major leverage point for health. Relaxation is like a, uh, it's like a drug. It's like a medication. It's like a prescription medication. And in the future, we'll have doctors writing prescriptions for relaxation, writing prescriptions for meditation, writing prescriptions for saunas and hot tubs, writing prescriptions for helping us leverage the relaxation properties. Get a book called The Rel Relaxation Response by a guy named uh, Herbert Benson, B-E-N-S-O-N, who was a uh, Harvard physician. And he noticed that when people relax, their blood pressure dropped. When people relax, their, all the markers for health improved. Relaxation is a health strategy. It's not an indulgence. Four, exercise. Build connective tissue. Exercise goes hand in hand with relaxation. A little bit of exercise, a little bit of stress on the system is important. The human biosystem grows and improves and thrives under conditions of a little bit of stress, a little bit of exercise. There's a use it or lose it phenomena that takes place inside the body. If the body doesn't feel like it needs to grow, it's not gonna grow. So you gotta push it a little bit. 
Building connective tissue is not just about appearance. It's not just about our, how we look in our skin. You know, a lot of times when we think about connective tissue, we think about wrinkles. And certainly, breaking down, uh, broken down connective tissue is why we get wrinkles. And building connective tissue will help prevent wrinkles. That's why I came up with my Truth Retinol. That's why I came up with all my Truth products, to build connective tissue. But building connective tissue is not just about appearance. It's not just about aging. It's about building a strong circulatory system. The blood vessels that feed the heart are composed in large part by connective tissue. When the connective tissue breaks down, one of the body's repair mechanisms is to put cholesterol and calcium in the, break, in the broken down areas. So cholesterol and calcium and plaques really are secondary to broken down connective tissue. Calcium and cholesterol and the plaques are repair mechanisms. So if we strengthen the connective tissue in the blood vessels that feed the heart, not only will we get more blood flow and more oxygen and more nutrition and more detoxification to the cardiovascular system, but will also prevent or reduce the likelihood of plaque formation. That's how you reduce plaques. That's how you reduce calcification. Not by taking a dumb drug, not by taking a toxic drug, Again, I said this before, if you're on a toxic drug now and some doctor has told you you're gonna be on it the rest of your life, your number one health goal, number one health challenge should be to figure out how to wean yourself off that drug. If you're on a statin drug, one of the best things you could do to wean yourself off that drug is to strengthen your connective tissue. Strengthening the connective tissue is also about detoxification and about nourishment because it's the connective tissue that feeds the cells. It's the connective tissue that detoxifies the cells. And it's the connective tissue that becomes sludgy and toxic as a precursor to all degenerative diseases, including heart disease. How do you build connective tissue? Well, exercise is one way. Another way is with good nutrition. Vitamin C is the rate limiting step in connective tissue buildup. That means no vitamin C, no connective tissue. So use vitamin C regularly. You'll get it in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, you can get vitamin C powder very inexpensively. There is no excuse not to use vitamin If you have heart disease, if you have any health challenge, vitamin C is a panacea. It's good for everything. But especially if you're dealing with cardiovascular health issues, there's no excuse not to use a little bit of vitamin C, a gram, two grams, three grams every day. You'll get it in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. You can get straight powder. I like the straight powder. The only knock on vitamin C powder, on dosing yourself with vitamin C powder or using high doses of vitamin C is it may cause a little bloating or, or crampiness. Use divided doses, that is take your vitamin C in divided doses if that's, that occurs and use a, a lower dose if you have to. High protein foods, meats, bone broth, eggs, those are also important for building connective tissue. Eating connective tissue, eating collagen, eating glucosamine, Eating gelatin. Gelatin is good for the connective tissue, the connective tissue in the entire body. Connect gelatin is one of the all-time great cheapo supplements. It's great for the digestive system. It's great for anti-aging. It's great for bones, and it's also awesome for the connective tissue of the heart. Likewise, glucogel caps. And don't forget aerobic exercise, which will help strengthen the heart and improve oxygenation as well. All right, eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. I'm pharmacist Ben. You're listening to the Bright Side. We'll take a commercial break and come back with more good health information and you and your phone calls right after this. Don't go away. Anytime. Okay, we are back on the Bright Side. I'm pharmacist Ben. Eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. We do have lines open for you and. We'll get your calls here in just a moment. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, the longevity products, the longevity business, skin health questions, questions about formulations or ingredients, 844-236-6010 is our number today and every day on the bright side. And we do have lines open for you. Hang tight if you're on hold. We'll get to you momentarily. From, this is from uh, the American Heart Association, actually. Uh, meditation has the potential to reduce some risk factors for heart disease. How do you like this? That's American Heart, that's, that's from the American Heart Association. From the Journal of the American Heart Association, meditation might be a useful addition to a heart healthy lifestyle and medical treatment. Meditation may be associated with decreased level of stress, anxiety, depression, improved quality of sleep, overall well being. It may help lower blood pressure. It may help individuals stop smoking, and it may be associated with a decreased risk of a heart attack. And that's from the Journal of the American 
American uh, Heart Association, not some new age Boulder, Colorado hippie group. Mainstream medicine now recognizes the importance of meditation. We've been talking about it on this program for years. I've been meditating myself for almost 30 years. It's an amazing, amazing, amazing health strategy. It has nothing to do, well, I shouldn't say that. It does not have to necessarily have anything to do with spirituality. It can, it can certainly be, uh, have a spiritual component, but you don't, have to, you don't have to be a Buddhist. You don't have to even think about spirituality to meditate correctly. Get the book, The Relaxation Response by Herbert Benson. He talks about it at length. Dr. Herbert Benson. From JAMA Cardiology, AFib, heart problem more common than thought, doctors find several million older Americans have been diagnosed with atrial fibrillation, which is an abnormal heart rhythm, colloquially, colloquially referred to as AFib. It involves heart palpitations, dizziness, shortness of breath. It is a classic manifestation of an activated stress response system. Calming the body down is your major strategy for dealing with atrial fibrillation. Anything that stresses the body needs to be addressed. Now, that includes sugar, that includes digestive stress, and that includes also psychological, mental stresses as well. Relaxation strategies, including deep breathing, all the relaxation strategies we talk about on this program, especially deep breathing, can help with AFib. Also, reducing sugar intake. Treat your, if you have any cardiovascular health problem, including atrial fibrillation, treat yourself as if you were a diabetic. Pay no attention to what the doctor says about whether you are or not. It doesn't matter what he says. If you have a cardiovascular health issue, if you have AFib, consider that you are a diabetic. Just treat yourself as if you were one. Diabetes is just a, an arbitrary designation, an arbitrary diagnosis based on whether your blood sugar reaches a certain threshold or not, 120. If you're at 119, they tell you you're not a diabetic. Just treat yourself as, a, as if you're a diabetic if you have any cardiovascular health issues. In fact, if, even if you're healthy, just eat like you would if you would be a diabetic and you'll, you'll stay healthy and you'll live longer. All right, one more I want to talk about and then we'll get to your calls. 844-236-6010 from the University of California at San Francisco. How ketogenic diets curb inflammation. The ketogenic diet, which is an extremely low carbohydrate diet, it's a low-calorie, low-carbohydrate diet. That's really important to keep in mind. Low-calorie, low-carbohydrate, as well as high-fat and so-called, they say, moderate protein diet. Remember, protein gets turned into sugar, so you've got to be very careful with your protein. But the key to the ketogenic diet is low-calorie and low-carbohydrate. According to uh, scientists at the University of California in San Francisco, it works by lowering inflammation in the brain. And that means it's got very important, a very important role to play for seizure disorders, for folks who are dealing with dementia. It's also important for cardiovascular health. Just like you want to treat yourself as if you were a diabetic and go low carbohydrate and low sugar, use sugar metabolizing nutrients no matter what your health challenge is, same thing about the ketogenic diet. No matter what your health challenge is, you will benefit by a low calorie, high fat, low carbohydrate diet, by the ketogenic diet. In a paper that was published uh, last week in the journal Nature Communications, scientists found the mechanism by which a low carbohydrate diet reduces inflammation in the brain. It doesn't really matter what the mechanism is. The fact of the matter is, is by reducing your sugar and by reducing your calories, you will always reduce inflammation because inflammation follows food. And that's any food. We get an inflammatory immune response mounted after any meal, especially a high fat meal and especially a high calorie meal, but any meal will do it. This is why calorie restriction is always associated with a longer lifespan. And this is why the ketogenic diet suppresses inflammation. Ketones are powerful, uh, powerful little molecules that fuel the heart as well. So you'll get wonderful cardiovascular benefits aside from the low calorie benefits just by the generation of these ketones, by the production of these ketones, you'll get heart health benefits. Again, we see that taking care of your body, taking care of the heart, taking care of the brain, taking care of any system in the body is not a doctor issue. It's a lifestyle issue. And this is the best news anybody could ever hear if they're dealing with some kind of chronic long-term disease. Yes, the doctor can't do anything. He'll tell you there's no cure for your psoriasis. There's no cure for your osteoporosis. There's no cure for your multiple sclerosis. There's no cure for your autoimmune disease because there is no cure. But there's reversal. Cure is in the realm of, ma of magic. There's no cure. Your doctor works in this, in this realm. That's why he says there's no cure. But there's reversal. And reversal is in the realm of lifestyle. How we live our lives. How we eat. How we breathe. How we think. How we conduct ourselves spiritually, mentally, and emotionally. All right. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844 236 is our number. Let's go to 
Ed in Oregon. Good morning, Ed. Welcome to the Bright Side. Hi, and hey. uh, I want to thank you for all you do to help these people because you've helped me before. But what thank I'd you, like Ed. to ask you, ask you about is uh, I have a friend that has a wife that's getting MS. Mm, I just want to get your thoughts on Food. That. Food. First of all, read the Walls Protocol, W-A-H-L-S. That's Dr. Terry Walls. And while I don't agree with everything she says about uh, uh, her spe the specifics of her protocol, her point is, is that we eat our way into autoimmunity. See, when we eat the wrong kinds of foods or when our intestine breaks down and the wrong and, and toxins, food particles, get into the blood, this initiates an immune response a defensive response, a protective response. That protective response is a bio, it involves biochemistry, and the, per, the protective response can sometimes affect our own cells. That's what autoimmunity is. And there's some complex reasons for that. I don't want to get into it, but the point is, is that autoimmunity needs to, number one, be regarded as a leaky gut phenomena and as a food phenomena. And you can prove this to yourself, or your friend can prove it to yourself, or anybody out there listening who's dealing with autoimmunity can prove it to yourself by fasting. Every time, every autoimmune disease will, uh, the symptoms of every autoimmune disease will subside when you stop eating. Now, it may take you a few days, and most people don't fast for more than three or four days. It may take you three or four days of cleaning the system out. Your autoimmune system symptoms will subside. Then when you start eating again, eat very carefully, eat strategically, and eat consciously. Pay attention to what you're eating. And notice how your body responds to specific foods. What you'll notice is if you have MS is that your inflammation increases with specific foods. And it's not just good foods, bad foods. You can have problems with tomatoes. You can have problems with lettuce. You can have problems with so-called organic and benign and gentle and good foods. So you've got to be very conscientious about the relationship between foods and your autoimmune symptoms. And then you're going to eliminate those foods. Now, if you want, don't want to go through a full-blown fast, do a Swero V cleanse. Swero V is available at our website, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and pharmacistben.com. Hang on, Ed. I'll tell you about the Swero V cleanse, and we'll finish up when we come back, and we'll take the rest of your calls. Uh, hopefully, we'll get to all your calls when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Right side, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking to Ed in Oregon about multiple sclerosis. All autoimmune diseases, including MS, Ed, need to be regarded first and foremost as a digestive condition. When toxins get into the blood through a leaky gut, they initiate an immune reaction. That immune reaction can cross-react with tissues in the body. When you come right down to it, the tissues in the body are basically, they look the same from a molecular standpoint as the foods we eat. So when the body develops an immune response against specific foods, it's pretty logical that it can also develop that same immune response against components of the body. The myelin sheaths in the, the myelin sheath in the case in the case of multiple sclerosis looks like food to the to the immune system. So the same uh, reactions that occur that can occur to pieces of food in the blood can also occur to the myelin sheath. That's where you get your multiple sclerosis. You can prove it to yourself, or your friend can prove it to herself by fasting. There's other components in, uh, involved as well, specifically fatty nutrients like vitamin D and vitamin A, which is also, both are also important for the immune system. I'd be supplementing with vitamin D and vitamin A. Getting your vitamin D from the sun can be helpful. Turns out though, uh, there's an MS belt, so-called multiple sclerosis belt, which is a geographical area in the United States that doesn't get a lot of sun. So there's some folks who believe that sunshine and vitamin D deficiency, that is, is related to multiple sclerosis. Get out in the sun, use vitamin E supplements. Vitamin E is a wonderful anti-inflammatory for the fatty part of the body. The myelin sheath being composed of fat, I'd be using 400 international units of vitamin E a day. Make sure your friend is on the healthy start pack and, of course, using digestive support nutrients like the nightly essence as well as the ultimate enzymes can also be helpful. There's also, for MS sufferers, there's an interesting supplement called calcium D-glucarate. Calcium D-glucarate is a liver nutrient, and there's some literature that suggests that it may be helpful for uh, folks dealing with MS, not in a curative sense, but in a uh, reducing the symptom kind of sense. Calcium delta glucarate, G-L-U-C-A-R-A-T-E. All right, Ed, I'm going to let you go, buddy, unless you have anything else. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you, my friend. Let's go to Sal Jr. 
in Colorado. Good morning, Sal. How you doing, buddy? Good morning, Dr. Ben. I really enjoy your show. Thank you. I appreciate it every day. Where in Colorado are you? Bailey. Oh, Bailey. Okay, good deal. What's going on? Hi. My girlfriend has a woman friend who they've diagnosed her having 75% blockage in the artery in her neck. Mm. I I don't don't remember what she called it. And uh, they're talking about doing surgery. Well, I told her she <clears throat> that her friend first needs to start taking the Mighty 90. I don't know what else she would need to do to get rid of this blockage. Well, chelating agents are, the, are your main strategy for dealing with blockages. Chelation is a magnetic attraction uh, that uh, certain components, certain chemicals, whether you take them orally or sometimes have them injected, uh, they can magnetically pull out the, some of the calcium and other components that are in those blockages. So I would be doing, first of all, everybody should be thinking about chelation, chelation therapy. We need national chelation therapy insurance instead of Obamacare. Chelation therapy just cleans the blood. It's a great strategy. You can have it done uh, intravenously where they just stick it right into your veins. Uh, in, in a doctor's office or chiropractor's office or naturopath's office. You can also do it orally with things like N-acetylcysteine. 400 milligrams a day for your friend is probably a good idea. Uh, vitamin C is a great chelating agent, 1,000 to 2,000 milligrams a day. Algaes and chlorophyll have chelating properties. Uh, bentonite clay can help chelate. So anything she, could, anything she does to help chelate, magnetically attract toxins out of the blood will help. I would, if she already has that kind of significant blockage, I would be doing an injectable chelation therapy personally if it was me the next thing she wants to do is make sure she's using vasodilation or blood vessel opening strategies niacin is probably the most important or at least one of the most important get her on the ultimate niacin 400 milligrams a day magnesium can all have a vasodilation or blood vessel opening effect maybe a thousand milligrams of magnesium a day she'll get that in the healthy star pack absolutely the healthy star pack is her starting point she also wants to block the uh, or uh, uh, prevent the uh, flow of toxicity into the blood through the intestine, so patching up the intestine can also be helpful using things like, as we talked in our last, uh, with our last caller, uh, things to patch up the gut, uh, gelatin capsules, the glucogel caps, uh, the ultimate nightly essence and the ultimate enzymes. And by the way, the ultimate nightly essence contains an enzyme called natokinase, N-A-T-T-O-K-I-N-A-S-E, which is like a roto-rooter for cleaning out the blood. You'll get natokinase in the ultimate nightly essence, but you can also take extra natokinase kinase. That can be helpful. Vegetable juices also, as well as calorie restriction strategies and the ketogenic diet strategies too. Uh, And then also she'll get this in her healthy star pack. The ultimate essential fatty acids can also help thin the blood and improve, uh, improve circulation. Don't forget about the relaxation strategies that we talk about all the time. And slow, deep rhythmic breathing can also thin the blood. Also have vasodilation properties help improve, uh, help improve the movement of fluids through the uh, through the circulatory system. Now, whether or not she needs the surgery, I can't tell you. It depends on how significant her blockages are. Uh, but I wouldn't go by what one doctor said. I would have multiple doctors because you can't always trust individual physicians, not because they're mean, but because they make mistakes and they have opinions that aren't necessarily correct. And at the end of the day, it's the patient who's going to have the surgical procedure done. The doctor is going to go home and sleep really well at night, but it's the patient who's going to be dealing with all of the, all of the problems, the complications associated with surgery. And, and there are a lot of problems associated with any surgery. Don't go into surgical procedures, friends, unless you have absolutely no choice. Surgical procedures are last resorts. The vast majority of surgical procedures uh, will result in, in adhesions and scar tissue, which can fur- further comp- complicate health challenges. And that's even if you have a, a, a good prognosis, even if you have a good result from the surgery, you can still end up with scar tissue and adhesions. In fact, most people end up with scar tissue and adhesions, and that can cause problems down the road that may not even be related uh, or at least won't be connected to the surgical procedure, even though they may be related. So don't go into surgery unless you absolutely have to. It may be that your friend and has to, I don't know. But if she doesn't have to, these are nutritional, uh, everything I just talked about are nutritional strategies that she can use, lifestyle strategies that she can use. Thanks for your call, Sal Jr. Thanks for your kind words, buddy. I want to get to a couple more calls here. Let's go to Elaine in Alaska. What's up, Elaine? Long time no talk to. Hey, how are you doing? Thank you for turning me on to, uh, to that guy. I forgot his name, the Indian preacher guy. That was really interesting stuff. What was his name? Oh, yeah, Ravi Zachariah. Ravi. Right. Yeah. Give him a plug. What's his website? Uh, his uh, website is www.rz, like zoo, 
R Z I M as in ministry. R Z I M R Z I M dot com. Dot org, dot org. Oh, dot org. R Z I M. Randy Zebra Igloo Ben dot org. R Z I B dot org, right? R Z I M. As oh, I'm in sorry. R Z I M. Okay. Yeah. R is in Randy. Z is in Zebra. I is in Igloo. M is in Mary. Dot org. It's kind of an interesting site. There, he's a pre- this guy's a preacher, and he's got an interesting take on the Bible. So I don't want to I don't want to digress too much. I, Elaine, we only have about a minute. What's going on? Okay. Awesome. Yeah. I just wanted to call. I got your um, True Skin products in February. Okay. And I absolutely love them. Let's see, I got Thank this you. Um, retinol gel because um, I'm like in my mid 40s, still dealing with acne, and that really helps. And then I got the Truth Serum. Nice. Um, and I like the little bottle too. I went ahead and got that for traveling, and that's really very cool. nice. Thank and you for sharing that, Elaine. I appreciate that. Yeah, but I had a question. Um, I'm. I've heard you talk about acne, like the T zone is hormonal, cheeks are digestion. I think you said the below the shoulders is like lymphatic, Liver. but I'm getting this stuff like along the neckline, and they're deep. Same deal. That's like the shoulder. There's a large. There's a and you know this. You're you're a body worker. There's a large uh, collection of the lymph in the neck and shoulder area. Right? That's where the yep. a, a huge pool of lymph. So any breakouts along the neck, underneath the uh, chin area, sometimes people break out underneath the chin area, neck, uh, throat, um, uh, upper chest, or back, those all need to be regarded as liver issues. Now, you are definitely dealing with hormone problems, uh, hormone issues. I don't want to say problems, but hormone issues. And I think, I don't want to get too personal here, but you're probably somewhere in perimenopause or something like that. And, and it's not unusual. Not that, quite yet, that, but it's coming. <laughs> Close, close. So it's not unusual that there'll be, uh, there will be hormonal issues, and a lot of women get hormonal issues at that point. It's extremely important to pay attention to food, especially fatty foods. I'd also be using progesterone or pregnenolone if you're not already, as well as vitamin A and vitamin E, maybe even vitamin D, all your fatty vitamins, actually. And then there's a really interesting vitamin that I'm gonna, I plan on spending a lot of time talking about that we don't really address too much, pantothenic acid, vitamin B5. You don't hear too much about it, but it's extremely important important for hormone health. All women and all, all women in uh, perimenopausal uh, or menopausal at uh, those stages of life and all folks who are dealing with oily or sebaceous acne should be using high doses of vitamin B5, pantothenic acid in combination with the entire B complex. Elaine, I'm out of time. Got to go. Thank you so much for your call. Oh yeah, zinc is also very important for hormonally related acne. 50 milligrams of zinc, pick holonate a day. All right, I'm Farmer Mrs. Ben. Thank you so much for listening to The Bright Side, friends. Have yourself a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. Don't forget to check out my websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for the longevity products, and truth, truthtreatments.com for our truth skin health products. We will talk to you all later, folks. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful day. We'll talk to you on our next Bright Side episode. Bye for now.